Welcome to Real Crusades History, the best source on the web for the history of the Crusades. Today we're discussing the Battle of Vienna of 1683. Kara Mustafa Pasha, the Grand Vizier of the Ottoman Empire, who came to power in 1676, is described by historian Lord Kinross as a man inflated with pride and presumptuous ambition, who was involved in countless extortions and acts of corruption, selling offices of all kinds without scruple. Black Mustafa, as he was known for his swarthy appearance, dreamt of becoming a great imperial conqueror. He hated Christianity and vowed to one day stable his horses in St. Peter's in Rome. He envisioned himself winning a great war against the Christian powers of Western Europe and then ruling over their territories on behalf of the Ottoman Emperor in Istanbul. However, Mustafa's was an age of Ottoman decline, with the Turks losing territories to the Russians in the east. Mustafa intended to offset this by conquering Habsburg Vienna. He saw his opportunity in a Protestant revolt in Hungary against the Catholic Habsburgs. Mustafa promised the Hungarian rebels Ottoman support, and at Istanbul delivered to the envoy of the Habsburg Holy Roman Empire an ultimatum, the surrender of the fortress of Gyur along the Danube. To this the Austrian envoy replied, A castle may be taken by force of arms, but not by force of words. Thus, war between the Ottomans and the Habsburgs began. In 1682, the horsetails of the Sultan's insignia were raised before the harem in Istanbul, the traditional symbol that the Turkish sovereign was about to set out for a military campaign. By spring 1683, a huge Turkish force was assembled, swelled with engineers, artillerymen, masses of horsemen, as well as the swarms of artisans and tradesmen that always accompanied Ottoman armies. In response, Leopold I, the Holy Roman Emperor, raised a force smaller in number under the skilled general Duke Charles of Lorraine, supported by funds from the Pope, as well as an alliance with King John III Sobieski of Poland. The massive Ottoman army, under the Sultan Mehmed IV, advanced west. On reaching Belgrade, the Sultan transferred command to Kara Mustafa, who believed at last his chance had come to inflict a great defeat on Christendom. From Buda to the Austrian frontier stretched a section of Imperial Hungary, and several of Mustafa's advisors suggested he reduce all the castles in this region before attacking Vienna. Mustafa rejected this proposal, stating that after Vienna's fall, quote, all the Christians would obey the Ottomans. Mustafa unleashed Tadar irregulars to ravage the countryside and burn the villages. It was July 13, 1683, when Kara Mustafa appeared with his sprawling army before the walls of Vienna. As he laid camp, Mustafa issued the customary Islamic ultimatum to the Christian garrison. Convert to Islam, surrender the city, or prepare for war. The Count of Sterenberg, governor of Vienna, didn't bother to reply. The emperor himself, along with Charles of Lorraine, had withdrawn with two-thirds of the small Christian army to hold positions within Habsburg territory at Linz, while the remaining third had been left inside of Vienna to mount a defense. Clearly, the Turks had the advantage. The Ottoman camp, so vast that it resembled a city itself, lay in the shape of a gigantic crescent on the western side of Vienna. In the center of it all lay the immense, richly arrayed pavilions of Mustafa himself, from which he ruled the camp like an emperor. Mustafa blockaded Vienna and took control of the surrounding countryside. But when the initial gunfire was exchanged between the besiegers and the defenders, it became quickly obvious that the Christians were outgunning the Turks, surpassing them both in marksmanship and in the quality of their weaponry. Mustafa had brought no heavy artillery, which was difficult to transport over long distances. Much of the Turkish ammunition was of poor quality and failed to ignite. The Turks rather focused their efforts on mining, Encounters between the Turkish and German forces on the walls were brutal and bloody, with the Turks usually unable to match the martial effectiveness of the Christians, who carried superior weaponry. On September 4, the Turks managed to breach a section of the wall and hurl back the defenders. The Turks screamed out victoriously, crying the name of Allah as they poured through the breach. The Christians fought back, and a two-hour battle ensued, which resulted in heavy casualties on both sides and ultimately a repulsion of the Ottoman troops. By now it was clear that Vienna was dangerously vulnerable. It was at this crucial moment that Emperor Leopold's ally, King John III, approached with his Polish army to take up the task of defending Vienna. 
John was joined by the main Habsburg forces under Duke Charles of Lorraine, as well as Saxon and Bavarian contingents. John led his troops through difficult forest passes to emerge on the cliffs of Kallenberg, overlooking the beleaguered Vienna. King John III took in the sight before him. The city, totally surrounded by hordes of Ottoman troops and a patchwork of mines, with some sections of Vienna's walls nearly reduced to rubble and barely held by the defending garrison. However, the Turkish camp was laid out openly, lacking entrenchment or a good ordering of the Ottoman forces. Seeing this, the Polish king immediately proclaimed, This man is badly encamped. He knows nothing of war, and we will surely defeat him. Just before dawn on the 12th of September, King John launched his attack. The disciplined Christian forces, in perfect battle array, descended the heights of Kallenberg like a flood of black pitch coming down from the mountain, consuming everything from the vantage of the Turks. In desperation, Mustafa launched a counterattack, but his men had to fight uphill. After a contingent of Ottoman cavalry was badly beaten, Mustafa dispatched the Janissaries, the Sultan's elite warriors, against the Christian forces. The fighting lasted all day. The Turks were caught between the Polish and Austrian contingents, which controlled the high ground and a determined garrison inside of Vienna. There, on the ravines and slopes, the Ottoman troops were broken. The Polish cavalry advanced on the plain, where they engaged the Turkish horsemen and hurled them back. King John reserved his best contingent for the final blow, and led them himself into the center of the Turkish camp, to the side of Mustafa's splendid pavilions. The remainder of the Turkish army broke and fled in confusion. The siege of Vienna had been lifted. The situation now was a complete rout of the Ottoman forces. Meanwhile, the Janissaries had remained all along defending their trenches before the city. Vienna's defenders, jubilant, rushed out to slaughter the elite Muslim troops, while the victorious Poles blocked their escape and joined in cutting them to pieces. John III and his army took full possession of the Turkish camp and captured huge numbers of Turks. The Grand Vizier, Mustafa, who dreamed of ruling Europe like an emperor, fled for his life with the scattered remnants of his army, while his war tent was being sent to King John III's wife, the Queen of Poland, as a symbol of Christian triumph. But it wasn't over yet. King John and Charles pursued the fleeing Turks, killing and capturing many more. Mustafa, arriving like a thief in flight at Buda, was so emotionally unhinged that he had the city's governor, Ibrahim Pasha, executed on frivolous charges of treason. Meanwhile, Sultan Mehmed IV got news of the grandiose Ottoman humiliation before Vienna and immediately issued orders that the head of Mustafa be brought to him at once. When the Sultan's agents caught up with the vizier, Mustafa was himself beheaded. So ended the days of the would-be conqueror of Christendom. News of the Christian victory at Vienna washed in a tidal wave of jubilation across Europe. At last, this seemed to be the decisive check of the Ottoman menace. The Pope offered a mass of thanksgiving and declared a grand crusade against the Turks. The result was the Holy League of 1684, composed of the three Christian powers of Austria, Poland, and Venice. Meanwhile, in Istanbul, the humiliation was sharply felt. Throughout the Turkish world, there was a painful awareness that their days as a great conquering people were over, their empire declining both in prestige and in territory before a triumphant Christendom. The Battle of Vienna ushered in a war that was to carry on for 16 more years, in which the Christians scored victory after victory over the Turks, further reducing the dimensions of the Ottoman Empire. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy Real Crusades history, please subscribe to this channel and find us on Facebook and Twitter. Also, consider supporting our work by making a PayPal donation using the donate link in the about box.